Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily share data that is reachable from Power Automate to the public internet. You might want to put data on your website or your blog to share details of product specifications or upcoming events, or share contact details of internal staff members, for example. Any data that can be accessed with Power Automate can be used as the data source. This could be a SharePoint list, Excel spreadsheet, common data service, or SQL Server. It's very simple to do and only takes one small flow to enable this functionality. I'll quickly show you what I've built, show you how to build it, and then you can decide if it would be useful in your environment. So here is a um, SharePoint list presented in Microsoft Lists that is a list of part numbers. There is a column on the right hand side that says show on web. I'll explain what that does in a minute, but quite self-explanatory. So this is obviously within SharePoint and accessible internally only. If we go over to this um, page on my blog, you will see that um, all of this data is being displayed here um, in a jQuery grid. This is very easy to use, very fast, so you can search no problem at all. If I type in filter, it will bring me up with all the filters, more or less instantly. I can also group by certain columns if I want to. Very easy to do. Sort by, let's move that across. Sort by the stock levels, price. I notice that there's no margin column and no cost price because we don't want to show that to the public. If we um, refresh the page, you can see that the first part is this fuel sender unit. So if we go back over to our parts list and modify this and where is it? Show on web. If I change that to no and close that up, that's now showing as show on web no. If I refresh this page, that fuel sender unit has gone. So let's go and have a look at the flow. The flow has only got four steps. When a HTTP request is received, this step is completely unconfigured. The only option that I've changed is this, so that it knows it's a GET request. And we do a normal GET ITEMS query to SharePoint. The only option I've got configured on here is an OData query, so that it only selects items where show on web is equal to one. And we're going to select action, which just thins the data out because the output from Git items includes all kinds of stuff that we wouldn't want to be transferring back. And then finally, we go into completely unconfigured response action. All that it has is the output from the select. If we go and have a look at the run history, you will see exactly what comes out of this select action and what goes back to the browser. And that is exactly what we were seeing in that JSON grid. So it's very simple to build, it takes two minutes. So let's now go and have a look at the HTML and JavaScript. Now, first of all, we've got the regular stuff that you need to build a page. The first important reference is this reference to jQuery, without which none of this will work. And then here we have got three lines to um, the DevExpress style sheets and JavaScript library. This particular jQuery grid that I'm using is a product of DevExpress, but generally speaking, all of these jQuery grids work in a very similar way. They expect a JSON input or CSV, and then they just create a grid based on the data that's come in. Um, so we've got these three lines. Then we have got this jQuery function, which is what actually does the work of um, querying Microsoft Flow or Power Automate, the columns that we want to show from the JSON that comes back, and then just some options related to how the table should be configured. The HTML is three lines, basically two divs. And it's this div grid container that is manipulated by this jQuery function, which then produces the table. 
I also wanted to show you how this behaves on a mobile device. In portrait orientation, it is a bit tricky, but once you flip the phone to be landscape, um, it works pretty well. This is a recording from my iPhone, and you can see here that I'm just doing a search, and um, it works fine. You can also still use the grouping um, or the sorting, um, and it works well, probably better than a, a native SharePoint list, actually. So there you have it, that is complete. Um, there is a blog post that goes with this video where you can copy the source code and see how it's done. But let's be honest, it's pretty easy and I don't think you will struggle. Um, see how you get on. If you do have questions, put them in the comments here or on the blog and I will try to help you out. Good luck.